In this tutorial, we'll look at the Displace and Noise modifiers in 3ds Max. So let's go ahead and start with the plane, go to our modifier list, and select Displace. Now, Displace works by actually taking a map. It could be a bitmap, like an image, um, and then displacing those values based on the white, gray, and black values within the image. Or you can use a built-in procedural map within 3ds Max. So for example, if I select from bitmap, and then I'll just go quickly to uh, a map that I've downloaded and then it will displace it based on that amount. Right now the strength is zero so you don't see anything but as I increase that strength you'll start to see the surface displace uh, in the same pattern as that picture. Now it doesn't look exactly like the picture because my faceting, my edge faces um, uh, are a certain distance apart. If I increase that distance or decrease the distance so they're closer the resolution of the image will become tighter and you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So um, that's displace. It actually is deforming the surface. So you can go and change um, the amount of displace, for example. So it's maybe it's just a little or it's a lot. It's really up to you. You can remove that bitmap. And then you can also choose a map that's built into 3ds Max. So here you see you could use a noise map or gradient map. Any of these sort of things will work. And there's a lot of different options that you have. Um, if I just use a basic like checker pattern, for example, say OK, you can see it'll displace it based on that checker pattern um, built-in map within 3ds Max. And if you want, you can always select this and then go into your maps um, within the material editor, um, which is M is a shortcut for that. And then you can find that map. So if I go down to my scene materials here, there's the map under scene materials. I could double click and we'll get into the mapping later. But if you double click on that, you can change like the scale of the map. You can see it'll affect the scale um, that it's being used to apply to that object. You could also, of course, open up the gizmo and then just scale it right there. So that's another way you could do it. You can also, of course, rotate it um, like any other gizmo and modifier within 3ds Max. So that's a displace that uses an actual map or an image of a um, of something to displace the surface. You can also use a noise modifier and noise uh, is a procedural map so you don't have an image and it just uh, basically creates a random uh, turbulence across the surface. So you can see you can change the the Y and the Z dimensions here. Um, you can see that it's not affecting it much because the scale is so big. If I decrease the scale you'll see it has a lot bigger effect on it. So depending on that scale that changes the effect. And of course the displacement in the Z is that dimension Displacement in Y is in the Y dimension, so you can shift the Y displacement, and the X is in the X direction. So uh, the noise modifier is a really good way to create a turbulent um, surface very quickly. And of course, uh, all this is animatable, and you can also open up the noise and change the gizmo, you know, rotate this or, or scale it in any direction that you want. And then the last thing you can do is actually fractalize it. So if you want it to be a little more sharp um, and how it's that's affecting the geometry. You can see it's a little bit different kind of noise pattern where it creates a fractal with the noise. So you have to change the scale to, to the appropriate numbers so you actually see it. So fractal is um, one option. You can change the roughness so it's more rough or less rough. You can increase the iterations which makes it um, you know, kind of tighter uh, noise pattern. So that's another interesting thing you can do. By the way, right now I have my edge faces on. If I turn those off you can see it a little bit better. So that's kind of, if you're doing these kind of noise patterns, it's useful to turn these on. You can already imagine what this is used for. If you animate it, it could be waves in an ocean, for example. But it's a really good way to deform a surface in a really interesting way. And again, if you change the number of segments, it'll have more or less of an effect depending on how many faces you have on that surface.